Morning, sign folk. Hey, uh, I've got another project that I'm working on today. This is a 32 inch by 72 inch outdoor double sided MDO three quarter inch plywood sign. Um, figure I'd take you along on this little journey here as uh, I get this project set up. So this is my this is the project that I'm actually working on. Um, in the past, I showed you how to um, make a template with your vinyl cutter using the software. The problem with cutting this is I can absolutely do this as long as I have some vinyl that is wider than 32. Um, I have three rolls of vinyl that are wider than 32. The problem is that's an expensive cast. It's brilliant blue. This stuff fades out. Um, I've got some 651 white and I got some etched glass back there. Problem is it's expensive film. That's the only thing. Those are 48 inches wide. Of course, trying to figure out the cheapest and easiest way to do this, I figured, well, um, I'm kind of going to go old school with this one and make a paper pattern. So I've got 48 inches of poster paper. So poster paper is what I'm going to use to, uh, to make the template for, for this sign. Uh, I'm going to get that uh, paper loaded in. I'm going to make a pattern, a full size pattern. Maybe I'll show you, actually, maybe I should show you how to do it in two pieces, just in case, because not everyone has large plotters like that. So maybe I'll break it up into two pieces, uh, you know, something that you can handle on a 24 inch plotter. Uh, maybe it'll make it a little bit easier. I'll have to, um, and I'll explain the differences between the both. So stick with me, guys. We're going to make another sign. Okay, so I got my paper loaded in, and um, as you can see, when I went to cut off some of the edge, I uh, had a major failure, yeah. and then the carriage just doesn't care, and it's like, uh, Saturday morning cereal is what happens. So, um, okay, so the next thing. I'm sure that when everyone got their plotter, um, they had one of these goofy things in it. Uh, you know, it's called a pen. It's a felt tip, water-based ink pen. Um, and it works great for doing exactly what we're doing. You got your little felt tip pen in there. Um, I essentially, it doesn't need a lot of pressure, but let's do a test cut just to make sure. Um, I'm going to back it off just a hair, so I'm going to actually move it to about 12. Go to my condition, do a test. Beautiful. And the only thing that I need is just this template. Okay, so now when I go to cut, I have to pole size. And the material is 48.7, so almost 49 inches wide. I'm really going to slow this down. It says on cut fast, so I bet you it's up on 50, which it is. So we want to back it down to about 25. Um, after job, that looks correct. And the same thing with the weed border. I don't need the weed border. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unclick the weed border. Go back here and set my panel up. So because I have a 54 inch plotter, I can print this no problem um, in one piece and be content with it because I'm just going to cut it out with a razor blade and I'll smooth it back out with a uh, palm sander. Let's just say that you only had 24 inches of plotter width available. And I didn't know if you knew this in Flexi, if you right click on one panel, see that grayed area, it won't plot that. If you do the same thing back and forth. So if you right click on either of these, the one that's grayed out will not plot or cut, print, whatever. Flexi assumes that you're going to use the maximum width of 23 inches, which we don't want to do that because there are too many variables in having this thing 22.9 inches wide and running perfectly straight are very unlikely. So what I like to do is I take it and I split it in two at a um, an even number um, to make sure that everything lines up and there's plenty of wiggle room. So if it's 32, I'd make it uh, 16 inches wide. And that's what I would do here. 
you split this side would cut one and this side would cut the other. Now you're more than welcome to say it, this one at 20 and then the other panel would be, this panel would be 12 too. So you do this one at 20, this one at 12 too. And that's how you would actually set it up if you're cutting on a plotter that is smaller than 54 inches or that you can't get it on one piece. So that being said, I showed you how to do that. I'm going to pull this back to 48.7, basically 40, 48 and three quarters wide. And I'm going to do this in one piece. I'm going to set it there in the middle, make sure that all of this stays put. That's fine. And again, I don't need a weed border on this, so that's why I just turned it off there. So that is being said. So watch me scramble. And this is pretty much ready to go. I'm going to turn this over. Well, if anything, you find out a use for your uh, little felt pen that, or, or a ballpoint pen. I think some of them come with ballpoint pens too. Yeah. But uh, the only thing left to do is just. Cut along this line. That's why you need one of these. They come in, they're very handy. You can actually pick them up pretty cheap. Look in the thrift stores. That's where I picked that one up. I think three bucks. Could you get me a little ballpoint pen? Trace around the template. A little thicker. I have no use for this powder. This is going to take it, roll it up, and stick it in the trash. All right. So now that now that I got my pattern on my plywood, I use two tools, power tools, to cut the template out. A regular circular saw and my trusty rusty. Black and Decker jigsaw with my fine tooth blade. Um, I don't know if you guys seen my other video, but uh, these bits that I use, blades, blades. These are the. Uh, they're made by Bosch, and they are 20 teeth per inch, so they're a very fine cut. Um, it produces a very smooth cut for the edges. Um, and uh, they just seem to work well for me because they're a little bit thinner. Uh, they're a little bit thinner blade, so they help me get around the corners uh, a little bit easier. Um, so anyways, those are the blades that I'm using for that. Just a standard rip cutting uh, circular saw blade. And um, I'm going to spare you the details and the boredom of actually cutting this because it's a lot of noise. Um, it'll probably take about a half hour to get it all cut out. But once I have it cut, I can get the edges primed. Once I have the edges primed, um, I can go ahead and fill everything in if there's any voids. And uh, once it's primed, ready to go, we're going to get some more one shot down on it. And uh, so stick with me and uh, we'll uh, get this one going and hopefully get this one painted. At least get this side painted today.
All right, so let me show you something stupid that I just did. So I pulled the circular saw out before it stopped running. And for whatever reason, this board is bending in and there was a lot of pressure in there and I couldn't get it out. So when I pulled it, it actually ripped back across. So I just made more work for myself and I actually have to go in and fill all that back in, which is a pain. That thing's pretty deep. It's a good eighth inch. It's at least through one ply. So yay. Um, go back through here, just looking at some of the voids. There's one. Uh, there's another good one right in there. That's one that has to be fixed. All right, so before I fill that void, I'm going to go ahead and get my plastic wood filler set up and ready to go. All right, so I got the uh, first layer done. I still need to fill in some of that back spot. And uh, so the problem is waiting for this stuff to dry enough that you can actually sand it. So uh, I'm gonna put another coat on and uh, fill it, obviously, and sand it back down. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get my kilts to my primer on it, just on the edges. Uh, that's pretty much it right there. And, uh, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to prime just the edges. I have primed, I have filled, I have sanded, I have primed, and I have sanded again. This sign and that little sign, because they're both white. Now, I'm not gonna be able to paint this one double-sided, so I have to do the one side, let it sit, give it a couple days, and I'm gonna have to flip it. It's just too big for me to handle, to flip over. Um, it's kind of beyond my capability, so to speak. So uh, I'm gonna get my gloves on. Uh, I'm gonna get ready to uh, get some of this paint down. And then once, uh, once we got it painted, I'm going to uh, vacate the area for a day or two. And, uh, we got plans tomorrow, so I'm not going to be in here, so it'll give the sign about two or three days to, uh, to cure. Um, so that one should be ready, good to go. I can do that one, this one, both sides. But unfortunately, this sign, uh, I'm just going to have to do the one side and uh, kind of roll with it. So uh, One shot. Sign painters, 101 white. Painted this on Saturday. Um, today's Tuesday, and um, it's more than dry enough. Um, I guess the next thing to do is take it, flip it over, uh, make sure the other side is good and clean, uh, get some paint, get some gloves on, and go ahead and roll the second side. Uh, well, the other thing is when you you want to be careful when you flip the sign. Um, obviously, you don't want the sign this new paint laying on anything other than something perfectly smooth and clean. Um, what I do is I get, uh, this is release liner for laminate, but you can use media release liner or whatever it is and just cut off a couple sheets. Um, you know, just enough to cover the tops of the saw horses. So when you put them on there, it doesn't scratch, um, the surface and, uh, you know, if the paint's still a little soft and it won't, uh, make any weird patterns or anything in your, uh, in this top layer of finish. So, um, this is going to sit face down for at least another two or three days uh, for it to cure before I can get a letter. But after that, I think it'll be okay. But this is an important step too, um, is putting something down on the saw horses to protect it. Um, I don't recommend using fabric um, because of the weight of the sign. You'll actually, um, you'll create little indentions. Um, so I prefer to use something soft, um, thin, and uh, something without a pattern in it. So, um, and again, that's why I use the, 
uh, liner from the vinyl materials. So just something else to think about. Alright, so I got the second side painted. I barely had enough paint left to coat this whole thing, and I really hope that it's enough because I have zero white one shot left. So, again, now I gotta wait for this to dry for at least two days before uh, we can actually get it lettered. And hopefully, you learned something. Hopefully, uh, you stick around. I appreciate you guys hanging in. I appreciate all the likes, and I really appreciate all the subscribe. Um, if you all ever have any questions about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, um, or even, you know, you want to bounce something off my head or, um, whatever it is, I I'd be more than happy to help you guys out. Um, uh, you know, having aspiring sign painters, um, is a different breed, uh, totally different way of sign life, I guess, sign folk. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. I really appreciate all the subscribes and all the likes. Um, this actually gets a lot more attention than what I ever thought it could be. So I'm going to continue doing this. If you guys want to see more, like I said, let me know. Uh, give me a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Appreciate it, guys. So good. Um, I have my sign stuff tray down there, and um, this is going to be what I call a split panel sign because the sign is 32 inches tall. Um, my media, my cut media width was uh, I had 30 inches of uh, cast media that I cut, and I think I broke it down to uh, about 24 and a half is where this split is. So anytime that you do a panel. Um, at least in Flexi, um, it gives you the option to overlap the portions that will be, that were actually cut off, which is just these ends. When I did my panel, I spliced it here between this bar and in between the phone number. So the only thing that I'm going to be overlapping are these ends of the outline. <clears throat> and the thing to remember when you do these panels is uh, for the longevity of the sign, the best way to do this is so that um, Obviously, the sign is going to hang this way, so you want this piece to be the first piece, this piece to be the second piece, because you want this overlap this way. Um, so the bottom piece would be here, and your overlap is here, so that the water and everything runs down this way. You don't want it this way, because it's just inevitably going to probably fail if the water hits, and it'll actually curl that edge. So uh, what I need to do is uh, get this first piece down, oh, sorry, first I need to measure it, get it all set, get this first piece down, then I'll overlap and um, get that second piece down. And this actually has a drop shadow and I'll get all that stuff sorted as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started getting everything positioned to where it needs to be. I'll probably put this in time lapse because uh, it's pretty boring, but I'll kind of zoom in on the details as I go through it. Okay, so that was a uh, time lapse of me getting 
uh, my measurements, getting everything square on the on the sign. And so essentially what I've done is I've measured three quarter inches around because that's the spacing between the edge of the sign and the edge of the border. Now in Flexi, with my panel set up, I already set up a eighth inch overlap between these two pieces. So um, that's where that pretty much needs to be. I can look at that, that looks correct. And you go down on this side and that looks about correct too. So the thing with when you do your panels is um, get everything laid out the way that it needs to be. Don't apply anything yet. Um, but now that it's all where it needs to be, um, you need to separate these two. And again, this piece needs to go down first. That piece will go down second because this piece will overlap over here, although it's backwards right now. But that's why I put the tape on that top panel because I'm just going to flip it over because it's already in position. There's no need to reposition it. Um, and then once I flip this top piece over, um, then I'll go ahead and I'll apply that bottom piece. It'll be down, squeegee, remove the app tape. Then, um, then you put the top layer down. So <clears throat> I'm going to put it back on time lapse and uh, hopefully we don't have any more interruptions. Hey, sign folk. All right, so um, my sign is done. Thumbs up, finally. Um, last thing I got to do is uh, install these. I have to install my sign hangers. Um, I prefer the aluminum over the stainless um, because uh, the stainless, obviously, it's silver, and uh, the aluminum uh, sign hangers are powder coated white which actually matched the sign very nicely. So the only thing left to do is uh, obviously mark where the user are gonna go. Um, typically your spacing is about, uh, it's about an inch and a quarter from here um, to where the hole goes. And um, essentially you just put a piece of wood behind here so it doesn't blow out the, uh, blow out the back. Piece of tape just to make sure that the vinyl doesn't get too marled up. But even though this is gonna cover it up a little bit, um, I'm gonna go back and use some of my uh, my trusty Lexel, and I'm going to fill that hole after I get these holes drilled out, and I'm going to attach them with my inch and a quarter uh, by quarter inch stainless steel um, screws and uh, what are those uh, lock, locking nuts, nylon locking nuts. Um, um, again, I get these sign hangers from uh, I get mine from HarborSales.net. Um, Last thing I got to do is just drill the holes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get all that stuff marked out and get those drilled. And I think that's going to be the last thing. And hopefully the customer comes here in the next couple of days and picks this beauty up four acre farm. I believe they are 
they're out of Charlotte area, North Carolina. And like I said, we're in South Carolina. So these people are driving a couple hours to pick a sign up. And I'm honored, you know, that these people actually go out of the way and they find me to, to do this kind of stuff. But this isn't the first one, and I'm sure it won't be the last one. Okay, one last thing. Um, so this is just a scrap piece of half-inch MDO. And uh, essentially, I just use it to put underneath the sign there. So as I'm drilling the hole, I don't... Uh, actually bust out the bottom and uh, I put a little bit of blue tape on it um, just to protect the underside from getting scratched um, it would really be painful if you went all this way of doing this great sign and you do something stupid like scratch the vinyl or something like that so um, you know another three cents worth of insurance um, just to finish the project out so I'm gonna go ahead and get everything drilled and get these installed I like to spread them out and then I'll let the uh, nuts and bolts do their thing when, uh, when they go through there. Done. Okay, so there they are all installed. I'll even show a picture from underneath uh, if I can get it. There we go. It's not the greatest, but you get the gist of it. Um, so there you go, guys. Uh, 32 inch by 72 inch, three quarter inch outdoor MDO. Uh, painted sign, painted with one shot, uh, lettered with it, the black is Avery, uh, A9 cast, and the uh, the gray is 751 Orcal. That's what I had. Um, it should be fine. I think the customer will be happy with it for many years to come. Hopefully, uh, customers can read and uh, their business will prosper. And that's it for now.